Hello, I'm Steve Maskery and welcome to Workshop Essentials. I've got a dining table! I've not had a proper dining table for about nine years actually. I used to have a big one that I built in American cherry with a butterfly leaf and you could sit eight comfortably around it when it was extended, ten. We once had twelve, <laughs> that was a bit tight, but it was a big table and it was beautiful. And I lost it when life went pear-shaped. Uh, and so I've been making do with a Victorian side table ever since. Fine for one, cosy for two, more than that, forget it. So a dining table has been on my to-do list for a long time. And I've had a design in my head which was basically a pippy oak top, which I have got, and then an understructure of a double pedestal based on a shaker candle stand, a, a bigger version of this bit, if you like. And therein lies the problem. When you go up in scale, this has to get very chunky in order to be strong enough. And uh, there are plenty of candle stands that have broken at this joint, let alone a dirty great big dining table. Now I do think I've worked out a way how that can be engineered successfully, but it does uh, rely on me getting a, a very particular board for these columns. And I've been looking for over a year and I've still not found it. And I've got a friend who, whose opinions I respect actually, who's uh, done his damnedest to get me to forget the whole idea uh, altogether. So uh, rather than wait any longer, I've decided to do a sort of stop gap. Now this is a pippy oak tabletop, English oak, and all these pieces of cat's paw are where the table, where the tree has got damaged at, at different points in its in its life, in its growth, and uh, and then so when you cut the tree up, they appear as these beautiful areas of cat's paw, and it's called pippy oak. Let's start with a mistake, shall we? I have bought a pippy oak tabletop. It's already been jointed together. I bought it without seeing it. I just saw photographs and it was a big mistake really. I paid far too much money for it and far from saving me some work because I thought I'd just be able to cut it down, clean it up and it would save me some work. On the contrary, I've got a lot of work to do in order to get this into usable raw material. Let's have a look at the things that are wrong with it. For a start, although the joint line has been jointed very cleanly, it's not been done in a very sympathetic manner, I don't think. If we have a look at this end over here, you can see that it's actually very nicely balanced. Symmetrical, very good. But by the time we get up to this end, I mean, look at that. It's, it's nothing like symmetrical. I don't know why anybody would do that. And along the way, we've got some sapwood in one half, but not in the other. It's a mess. The other thing that's wrong with it significantly is its flatness, or rather lack of it. I can get my little finger underneath the ruler there. And it's not just that it's cupped at the joint. Uh, this half is not too bad, but that half is quite severely cupped. It's about three millimetres just in that half alone. So I've got to either sacrifice thickness, which I don't want to do, or I've got to accept that it's not flat and I want it flat. So I've got a decision to make about which one uh, I go for. It's a trade-off between the two. It's also been plastered in polyurethane, which feels horrible. I mean, it really does feel horrible. So that's got to come off. The, there is some good things about these. Um, I do like what they look like. I like the figure. Um, it's, it is fairly nicely symmetrical if it was jointed properly. And uh, he's also, the person who made this originally, has also filled in all the fissures, I assume, with epoxy. And so that saved me a bit of work. And he's done quite a nice job of that, actually. Um, so what I plan to do is to cut this down both in length and in width. Now my dining room is a very modest size 
and it's also a thoroughfare. You come in from the front door area into the house through the dining room. So that really restricts how much furniture and how big a piece of furniture I can comfortably put in there. So um, I think that I need it to be about five foot or 1.5 meters long. That will be, that'll seat four people comfortably. Now I live on my own and I don't have lots of guests. Uh, the days of doing dinner parties for eight are long gone. So a five foot dining table will be more than big enough, I think. Um, and then I, I shall work back from my new centre line and probably have it about 30 inches wide. The, uh, there are some dominoes in here. I do know that there are dominoes. I don't know how many and I don't know where they are. So if I just cut this off at five foot, I run the risk of cutting through a domino and having it showing at the end of my table. So I am going to cut down this centre line that's been, that's been already jointed and that will tell me where these dominoes are. And then I can work out where I can cross cut safely without exposing one and take it from there. I'm then going to cut out this wedge, this triangle of, of stuff I don't want, sapwood. Uh, there's a very nice bit of pippiness there, but it doesn't match anything else, so that can go. And that will bring this part of this pippiness here over to this pippiness here, and that should uh, balance much better. It'll bring this over towards that as well. And it should end up being a much nicer balance between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And the other thing that it will do is reduce this void here. In, this is gonna be the center of the table, but there is no figure here, and it would be much better if there was. But by losing a couple of inches, it will reduce this void and um, I think that will look a lot better uh, that way as well. So lots to like, actually, but lots to put right first. And as I say, I think I've made myself work rather than saved myself work. Hey, you live and learn. So I'm gonna cut, it, cut that down and I take it from there. Right, let's see what we've got to work with. There are three dominoes in this section. One about here, three inches from the end, one here, and one about there. Now, I've got to be careful I don't cut through that. Um, I did say that I wanted to make it five foot long. Um, having done a little bit of research and had another look at my room, I don't think I need to be quite as big as that. Um, you really need two foot, 61, centimeters per person on an edge uh, so and that's a minimum but that's a, but that's a comfortable minimum you can squeeze more people in, but i don't want to don't be, I don't want to be eating like this do i no so um instead of 1.5 meters i'm going to reduce it to 1.4 meters which is about 55 inches and that means everybody will still have 70 centimeters of elbow room so it should be nice and comfortable and that means I can do that without cutting into either of these dominoes at the end. Now, the other thing that's happened just in doing that cut is that the wood has moved. If I put this back to there, that is touching at both sides and I've got a two millimeter gap in the middle. So I've got a challenge to shoot that edge straight. But before I do any, uh, any straightening up, I need to remove this wedge of wood here. Um, I've got a blue chalk line, which is <laughs> actually nearly rubbed off now. But um, if I cut that off while I've got my rip blade in my uh, TS-55, then I can put these two together and see what I'm working with.
Well, I've cut out the original wedge that I marked out and then a little bit more because it wasn't um, completely even. But now, now, when I put these two together, that looks rather nice. That looks much, much better. And uh, of course, it's no longer rectangular, but it's all right. I've got plenty of width. So I've marked where I need to cut. I need to cut straight across there and straight across there. But I've, I've got to put my cross cut blade back on to do that. And then back to the rip blade to get these roughly to width. And I should find that they're considerably easier to carry. I mean, I can just about lift that on my own. By the time I've locked it off, that should be quite manageable. So a bit more cutting and I'll see you again in a moment. Now I've rearranged things a little bit. I've got my cross cut blade back in my track saw and I've rearranged the trestles so that both halves of the wood are going to be supported when I make that cut. I don't want a piece that big plattering to the floor. So it's just a question of setting the track square. I've got my pencil mark. This edge closest to me was the centre of the table before I ripped it in half. So that goes up to the pencil mark. And then we'll just get it square with my square of Thales. And if you haven't seen the square of Thales, there's a um, YouTube video of it. Really useful piece of kit for jobs like this. There we go. That's square. So now I think I'm ready to make the cut. You don't really want the soaring music a third time, do you? No, I thought not. And finally, back to some more ripping. So I've swapped the blade again. And I can just get 16 and a quarter inches. So I should end up with a table that's 30, 32 and a half inches wide. And 32 and a half inches is about 825 millimetres. Nice and parallel. Good, 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 good. He is... Well, at last, now I can see what I'm dealing with. And I think it looks quite good. It's much better symmetrical this way. And uh, the pippiness is quite well balanced. It's a bit pippier over here than it is over here, but it's not bad. And I think it's going to look fine. The length is fine. It's actually a little bit wider than I anticipated. I think I might take half an inch off each edge. Um, I think that will be better proportioned. Rather than my shaker style uh, pe pedestal bottom, for a quick and easy a temporary arrangement, I decided to just make four legs, four rails or aprons, um, soft wood, paint them, bish bash bosh, job done. So I started off making my legs and even though they're gonna be painted, I did go to the trouble of making sure that the grain direction was correct on all ones, so on all, on all four uh, legs, so that the heart of the tree, if you like, is in the middle of the table. So I made my legs and I mortised them with a hollow chisel mortiser. And then I decided to taper them to give them this slightly uh, more elegant look. Slight, uh, they're still fairly chunky, but a, a slight taper improves them. They're only tapered on the insides the inside faces, the outside faces are, uh, remain vertical. And I did that um, tapering on the bandsaw with a very simple jig. It was just a baseboard with an L-shaped piece of wood screwed down to it. And uh, if you use that, then make sure that the first face you cut has got a mortise in it, and the other face with the mortise is faced down on the jig. And that way, it's flat for the first cut, and then when you rotate it anti-clockwise, so the freshly cut face uh, comes to the top, you're still 
sitting on a flat face. If you do it the other way around, you're sitting on a face which is tapered and the thing will kick up at the end of the cut on the sort of fulcrum between the taper and the straight part of the leg. Because the top part of the leg is actually square, so that you get a nice uh, clean joint between the tenons of the apron and the tops of the leg. There is a YouTube video showing me doing exactly that for, the, for this project. The next thing to do was to make the aprons. And these are very simple, there's no moulding on them, they are just a straight piece with tenons at each end and a groove. We'll talk about the groove more in a minute. The cheeks of the tenons are cut on my table saw and I've got a jig which I rather um, grandly call the ultimate table saw tenon jig and I, I called it that because it's simply the best in the world. There's nothing to match it. There are other good ones but you've got to, if you think there's one better you've got to show me one that is uh, accurate. They're all accurate. Quick to use some are quick to use. Quick to set up, most are not. Mine is very quick to set up. And most of all, uh, guarded, relatively safe to use. Now most tenon jigs require you, to, re require you to remove the guard and the riving knife and nothing is put in their place to protect you. And mine is um, guarded on the right by the jig, on the left by a guard, and overhead by another guard. So to find one that's better it's got to at least match and indeed exceed in those four criteria. So the tenons were done on my table saw and then the shoulders of the tenons were also done on a table saw with a simple cross cut sled and the ends of the tenons were mitered so that they can get close to each other at the bottom end of each mortise without actually getting in each other's way. The top is held down onto the frame with uh, 10 buttons and so those buttons need a groove. Now this groove needs to be close to the top edge of the uh, apron all the way round and indeed the bottom edge of the groove is about 21 millimeters from the top edge of the apron. And that means when I make a tongue out of 20 millimeter stock, it'll be just shy of the top and will cinch up nicely. If the buttons are fatter than the gap available, then the top doesn't get pulled down. So that groove has to be milled before the uh, legs and the aprons get glued together. There are a couple of forks. Feel where they go. And there we have it in its extended position. And you could easily get eight around this. Um, not that I have seven friends anymore. <laughs> but I can't imagine me ever needing to use it extended. But you never know, when I'm dead and gone, somebody else might be glad of the extra capacity. When they're not being used, these um, leaves come off. come out and then the arms fold in one two and the forks park in the sockets so they don't get lost and then there are a couple of wedges uh, not wedges ledges on the underside and these just sit in there Those ledges are lined with bays actually, so that they don't scratch the, the polish of the wood. And obviously that one goes in on that side. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, enjoy your dinner. Chin chin.